a lot of this isn't going to make sense to you. And I'm sorry about that. I'm just going to start at the beginning with the house. My brother Milton disappeared when I was four. It was like the house just swallowed him up. Someone had put up a chain link fence, but it looked like I wasn't the first person to hop it. I lived here until I was 11, but I wasn't allowed inside half the rooms. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago, marked urgent, open immediately. I hadn't been back since my brother Lewis's funeral. In her will, my mother left me a key, but didn't tell me what it unlocked. Maybe she thought I'd know. Or she thought that the mystery would be enough to bring me back. The truth is, even after I inherited the house, I never thought I'd come back to it. But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answers to. The woods around the house have always been uncomfortably silent. As if they're about to say something, but never do. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. Crawling through the doggy door used to be a lot easier when I was 11. The power had been turned off the night we left. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how only one restaurant would deliver to our house, so we had Chinese a lot. Or how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture.
My mom was the only one of us who could imagine Great Grandma Edie living in a nursing home. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house after it sank. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. A lot of things got left behind in the whirlwind of that last night. After Milton disappeared, Mom sealed up all the bedrooms. Then Edie retaliated and drilled peepholes. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Mom must have locked the third floor stairs on the night we left. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. <sighs> Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan, but I had no idea what was behind that door. Just like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. Molly's gerbil had a tiny bedroom with its own even tinier gerbil cage. Being inside for the first time, I felt like I'd stepped behind a painting. I got the sense Edie had spent a lot of time here before my mom sealed the doors. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's going to happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. Can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. My Halloween candy was all gone. I kept eating and eating. I ate a lot of things that night. Then I heard chirping outside my window. 
It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. And suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. Mom and Dad didn't even look at me. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I cared about was eating that mama bird. I gobbled her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. She was almost too big to carry. I started choking, but I couldn't stop eating. And suddenly, I was a shark! off a cliff and into the ocean. Now, I was hungrier than ever. I wanted fat, juicy seals. I tore off her flipper and it tasted really good. So hungry, I jumped out of the water. When I opened my eyes, everything had changed. Now I was a monster, and I smelled people everywhere. I 
was big, but I moved real quiet. Closer and closer. All my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to be, and we both know. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. One summer, they evacuated the island, but Edie refused to go. For a few weeks, she was a celebrity. I hadn't thought of myself as Edith Jr. for a long, long time. 
Edie gave a big interview about a mole man living under the Finch house. My mom was furious. Lewis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Edie knit me a new pair of gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse, his wife Ingeborg and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother.